So we talked about our first Java application and we talked about comments in Java. So let's talk about organizing your code. Organizing the code is just a good practice or a good programming practice. It's going to make your code read eas easier. So it's going to provide you with easier readability of your code. Now comments, indentations, and new lines are all ways to organize the code. Now see this code, although it's got a lot of comments, it's heavily commented, but it's organized. You can just look at it and you can know what the code does. And uh, but since we have the comments here, this is my first Java application. It's a hello world application that prints hello world. Now this comment provides you with some information, even if you don't know the whole code down here. And now this says this is a print statement. Now, if we go and look at this other code, it's going to do the exact same thing. There are no comments. We don't have any indentations. Now, if we look at the indentation here, it can clearly show me that I have this thing, this whole thing inside the main method. And this, since it's indented, so it's inside those brackets, so it's inside the class. Here I don't have any indentation, so I may have to do some guessing if I have a large code. Believe it or not, this code will do the exact same thing as the other codes. So in terms of output, those three codes will perform the exact same thing. But this is not organized at all, and this is very organized this is kind of organized in the sense that we are starting everything in a new line now let's talk about java output so we have two ways to output in java what we have seen in the slides is the print len or print line we we read it both ways now we also have seen the java the, the system dot out dot print so it's just dot print. We don't have any ln or anything. And then we have whatever we want to print in here and then a semicolon. So what is the difference between print len and print? So print len is going to print the output and then we'll start a new line after the print statement. Uh, but the print is going to print and stay on the same line. So let's try to uh, see the difference between those. So now if I go ahead and have my semicolon here back and I do another one. So let me just, to make it faster, let me just copy this, put it right here. And then let me say something like this is my second line. And let me save this, bring out my command prompt, Java C, and then let me run it. Now if you look, I have both statements on the same line. Although I have one up top, one, uh, one in the bottom, if I uh, zoom in here, we will be able to see that I have both in the same line. So how can I have it in the second line? The answer is since print len is going to perform the print and then jump to a new line, then I can replace the first one with print len or print line and save this, go back. Again, whenever you do any update in your code, you have to jump, go and compile again. And then using Java C, I will compile. Using Java, I will run and then hello world for the second time this is my second line now if i have anything any other print statement in here it's going to be printed on the same line as this the reason is i'm still using print if i want to make sure i can just say print line now some of you might may ask can i use print line with nothing in it the answer is yes so if i do this and have 
nothing inside it so what I'm saying is go ahead and print nothing but then jump to the next line so what's gonna happen here is I will have a blank line or an empty line between those statements so let me go compile and run again and see this is hello world for the second time oh I didn't save it that's why it didn't change anything so you have to save it and I forgot to save it if you don't see any change that means you probably did not save now see I have one print blank line another print and that's the effect of having a print statement a print line statement without anything inside it so let's go back to our presentation now we have used those to output text which is actually called a string in Java so any text in Java we call it a string you can have multiple strings and attach them with the plus operator and this is what we call string concatenation this is useful for many applications as we will see later in the course so let's try to do this so I can go ahead and say hello world for the second time and then I will have plus something else which is something that I just added let me save it compile it and run it and you will see that I added this piece of text to the previous piece of text because we can add strings and again this is called string concatenation now let's talk about the output now the print and print line can be also used to output numbers so if we are outputting numbers and we use the plus operator what will it do so if we try to do 2 plus 2 is it gonna add them together or is it going to tell me 22 so let's see if I go back and let me take all of this out because we just need to test the 2 plus 2 so 2 plus 2 save this compile it and run it now I get 4 so if you do any kind of mathematical operation operation here it's going to actually evaluate it for you now if I do this what's gonna happen if I include them in quotation marks now keep in mind that we said everything in quotations in Java is going to be printed as is so this is going to give me 22 because it's uh, saying that this is a string containing number 2 and this or the character 2 and this is another string containing 2 so I will just attach the strings to each other so this is now not a mathematical operation anymore how can we use it differently is um, what we've seen in the previous video now let me do something so if I say to or something like the result is and then what I will do is to so the result is and I will add something to the string 2 plus 2 so this plus is telling me add whatever comes after this string to my output now what do you think is going to happen here now we have seen that this, this 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and this is a string so let's save it compile it and run it now it's saying the result is 22 so it treated those as strings now by default if you follow a string with any number in Java it's going to act as if you did this if the first one is a string then it's going to act as if you did this how to solve 
this problem. One solution is to include it in parentheses and then let's save it, compile it and run it and now the result is 4. So what's happening here is we are saying evaluate this total here or evaluate this thing before adding it to the string. Now let's try to add an equal sign. Can we add an equal sign in there? So if I go back and do something like the result and then let me do this equals 2 plus 2 compile and then it's giving me an error it says unexpected type so we, let's try something else let's say 2 plus 2 uh, equal 4 can we do this the answer is again no unexpected type so it's not expecting this so what we call by what what we use this is for what we call the assignment so if we, if we want to assign something to another thing then we use this so the equal sign is not going to work in this case what if I really want to include it so what I can do is this include it as a string and then save it go back compile and run and now I have it because remember everything inside the string is going to be treated as is and it's not going to be changed or modified now what's the difference between when we use quotations and if we didn't use the quotation again using quotation will treat whatever is inside as a string like what we have seen with the numbers now if we want to use equal four as we've seen you have to put it in the quotation and if we use the print versus print uh, so so if we use the plus operator with numbers it's going to act as if those are strings now we have some programming exercises you can just try to do those exercises from the book and um, these are like question number um, 5 and 1.9, 1.9 question 6 and 1.10 question 4. So do these four practice as they are a good practice to what we just learned.